Hello people, this is George with yet another Call of Dragons video. Today we are going to speak more deeply regarding city defense and garrison in general, simply because as the game is progressing and we are already we are soon going to enter to the new season, more and more people are getting more powerful, we are having more tier 5 players and a lot of people are getting rallied in the city and they are losing a lot of troops and they are like losing interest because all their progression are getting lost. So in order for us, um, as a tier 4 player, myself as a free-to-play player, to understand how to maximize the city defense to not lose your troops, to not lose your interest to the game, I decided to speak more deeply regarding uh, Garrison and in general how to defend your city because there are like a couple of tricks that you need to know regarding city defense. First of all, as you guys already know, we already receive we are receiving more heroes which are which has a Garrison talent on their talent tree. But um, until we're gonna find out which heroes are best uh, in the garrison we need to speak more about in general damage type whenever you are uh, having a hero in your garrison first of all in this game uh, we need to know that there is two type of damage uh, damage factor right first is uh, physical a physical damage factor as you can see and second one is magic Whenever you have a hero on your garrison, uh, dependent on your uh, physical or magic damage factor, let's say first uh, Theodore, who has a physical uh, damage factor on his skill, the physical damage factor will be, uh, will be amplified and will be used only from the uh, physical units, right? So let's say we have Theodore as a garrison hero, uh, the damage factor will be amplified from the fighting physical units, right? Your physical units will be uh, added to the battlefield whenever you are uh, saving your city. Same as the magic units, uh, let's say we are having a Waldir as a garrison hero, Waldir is going to use the magic units, uh, of course, whenever you are, whenever we are speaking about units, it depends on the amount of units, how many you have wounded, slightly wounded, and in general amount how much units you have on your uh, city currently. Whenever you are being attacked, uh, another factor is a healing. Uh, such as a Garwood, right? Like, as I know, a lot of people are using uh, Garwood as a garrison hero. Gar is a healing as a uh, garrison uh, hero. It's a pretty different, right? Healing in general has a different kind of uh, attributes in the game. For example, if you put Gar Garwood and his healing in his, into the uh, pass, it will be horrible because simply your hospital going to uh, receive a lot of troops. Uh, and in general, healing works in the game like whenever you are fighting with the enemy, you have two type types of uh, wounded troops, right? One is light, light wounded troops, uh, which are like... Uh, troops who are losing some HP but still fighting but they are weaker and the wounded troops which are automatically transferred to your hospital right whenever you have a healing on your main hero as a first skill and you're gonna use this hero you're gonna take the troops from the hospital to the battlefield straight forward but as I said, um, whenever you are tier 4 player, a free-to-play player, uh, and you are using healing on your uh, main garrison hero, it's really bad, right? Imagine like you are getting attacked, your troops are going to the hospital, you have light wounded troops which are fighting, and whenever you're gonna use your uh, healing on your Garwood, for example, you're gonna take your troops from your hospital back to the battlefield. Why it's bad uh, to have healing on the, uh, as a garrison, right? Like only way, uh, like most efficient way to kill your troops, your, your own troops is to get attacked by somebody and to, to defeat, right? So let's imagine you are getting attacked, a lot of troops are being killed, like not even a hospital or not even light wounded, right? But some of, some of your troops are going to the hospital. If you're gonna use your healing as a healing factor, as a garrison hero, it will mean that you're gonna take your troops from the hospital back to the battlefield, 
which gonna mean that you're gonna have a lot more uh, dead troops uh, without recoverable, like they won't gonna go to the hospital, they won't gonna be a light wounded troop, they will just die and they will just disappear. That's why I would not recommend to put healing uh, heroes into the uh, garrison, simply because you will have a lot of uh, dead troops and your progression will be ruined, right? Nobody likes uh, to get zeroed or to get less power because somebody attacked your uh, town so like uh, it's time for us to speak more deeply about heroes which will be good in my opinion to put as a garrison leader and there is like a couple of obvious choice uh, one is one i already mentioned it's a theodore uh, and the plus of the theodore is a physical hero so every physical uh, unit which cannot be in your legion will be used uh, as a defense so like um, you can understand right especially if you are playing as a spring warden or uh, um, Wilderberg, they have even special units as a physical unit, so you're gonna use your most uh, units uh, into the defense of the uh, city. But, like, uh, we can speak more deeply about the garrison uh, skill uh, of the uh, Theodore, uh, which is like whenever garrison in a city or stronghold, Theodore Legion has a 20% chance to gain vigor and attack resistance when hit by an attack. So it does not really say which kind of troop type, right? It does not say it's a magical or physical. Uh, so it means that it's gonna be affected for the every kind of troop types, which is amazing. So you are getting like uh, vigor. Vigor means like HP. HP means more survivability. You are ignoring enemies' attack 4%. Uh, actually, if you're gonna max this skill, like 10% uh, attack resistance and 10% uh, HP bonus and the duration of the skill is 3 seconds, right? So, uh, Theodore is a great option uh, simply because generally you have more physical uh, troops in your city and Theodore will be able uh, to use all of your physical units into the defense of the city. Uh, another more of the budget version of the city defense is of course uh, Bahar and simply because uh, the damage type is a physical again and you will be able to use a lot of physical units uh, into the defense and the garrison skill uh, of the Bahar is that he will take a 15% less uh, skill damage while garrison and will receive 15% more healing. We already spoke about healing for the garrison uh, units, but in general, less skill damage uh, uh, like will be amazing because in this game, heroes, especially awakened legendary heroes, are getting a lot of um, skill damage. And if you're gonna have a more and more reduction of the skill damage, will be better for your city. So a lot of uh, your troops will survive the attack. I will be honest, whenever tier 5 player is rallying your city, nothing will help you. Uh, but, uh, like, uh, we still need to speak about defending the city, right? Because your city is, like, one of the most important aspects of your whole gameplay and your whole progression. It's kind of collection game and nobody likes to lose their troops, nobody likes to get your city burned and so on, right? So Bahar is more of a budget version of the garrison hero. If you don't want to use Theodore, if you don't want to use other heroes, of course you can use Bahar. He will do absolutely fine, but he won't be an amazing option. Other heroes, uh, as I said, like there is a Garwood with the garrison uh, talent tree and whenever Gar Garwood is garrisoning your hero or stronghold you are getting 10% uh, more HP uh, for your units and for your heroes. HP is great but the ma most weakness the Garwood has that uh, if you are getting hit by tier 5 players simply you will have more dead troops because Whenever Garwood will use his main skill, who, who has like healing factor 1,200, it will mean that Garrison. It will mean, mean that Garwood will take the troops which are in the hospital back to the battlefield, and enemy tier five rally will have more chance and more opportunity to kill your troops, right? And um, dead troops are horrible in this game. It's not that easy to collect your legions simply because every season there is like more and more legion capacity of the legion. So like if you want to progress in this game, you need to save your legions as much as possible. But uh, healing while in garrison especially makes you 
makes your legion die more, right? So I would not recommend uh, Garud as a garrison hero, especially if you are being attacked uh, from the tier 5 player. Uh, other heroes which does not have uh, garrison talents and I think will be good uh, uh, as a secondary hero for the garrisoning is Bakshi. Uh, Bakshi is getting Bakshi has a phys physical damage factor which is gonna be great with the Theodore as a garrison leader. Also, as a Theodore Garwood, uh, as a Theodore Bakshi is getting HP, 20% uh, HP for 5 seconds, and that's amazing, right? HP means more survivability for your legions. So, I think for the pair of the Theodore, Bakshi will be perfect. Uh, also, another hero which is great is Kinara. Especially because Kinara has a damage reduction, for example, uh, in, in his main skill. Also, Kinara is dealing a lot of counter-attack damage, right? So, whenever you are getting hit by the rally, counter-attack damage means a lot. Damage reduction means a lot. And, of course, some uh, like uh, buffs to your units uh, while they are all physical in your town. Sounds amazing, right? So... Uh, doesn't really matter if you if uh, these heroes don't have uh, garrison talents uh, simply because you're gonna use uh, Theodore with the garrison talent tree you're gonna use Bahar with garrison talent tree you're gonna use even uh, Garwood if you don't have any other option with the garrison talent tree and you go you will need some other heroes uh, to pair them with and I think Bakshi is great idea Kinara is great idea and in general, any hero who has a damage reduction or skill damage reduction or HP Vigor will be amazing for the city defense uh, of your town. And like, trust me guys, I have been already attacked once and it's horrible to use like 25,000 troops, like 30, 40,000 troops. And like in general, whenever game is progressing and we are entering to a new seasons, there will be a lot of uh, city burning, a lot of uh, dead troops. So in order to avoid uh, your troops to be dead, you need to understand how city defense actually works, right? Uh, like, of course, we have also some artifacts which we can uh, attach to our garrison leaders, which gonna be great, right? Uh, and there is like a couple of choices, but the main choice is a breath of the forest, like... Uh, main artifact for the garrisoning and the support artifact, which gonna give you uh, your garrisoned army uh, percentage uh, attack bonus and legion defense in a percentages. Regarding like skill of the breath of the forest, when you are garrison captain of the city and strong on randomly grants your legion one of the following effects every 30 seconds. Uh, it's gonna mean like every 30 seconds you will have an additional buffs. Uh, healing heals once every two seconds, uh, but we said that healing is bad, but it's not that high, 300, 300 healing factor is not much, but what's important, you are getting Vigor for 10 seconds, and uh, Vigor is 15% HP bonus. Also, great additional skill, you are removing all, well, like at least one debuff every uh, two seconds, and this uh, effect takes effect uh, for the duration of the six seconds. So, like, uh, if you have Breath, Breath of the Forest, uh, attach it to your garrison uh, leader, uh, so you won't be in a panic mode whenever you will see all red in your screen, uh, and you will be, you will understand that you are being attacked. Like, generally, um, like, people are attacking your uh, town whenever they see that you are not in the game, so it's always it's always better for you to uh, do any everything in advance to feel safe, to not get uh, attacked, to not get your city burned, and not get your troops dead. So, like primary and most important artifact for the garrison in your city is Breath of the Forest. But of course, there are like couple of artifacts which can be useful for the garrisoning. Uh, and like if we won't gonna speak mainly about skill. The Fang of the Ashkari can be great because you are getting a lot of defense, like Legion defense, Legion defense again. Uh, amazing art artifact in general for defending your Legion or anything in the game. Uh, all around the artifact, mainly for the tank, uh, right? So, defense is great idea always whenever you are speaking about uh, defending your uh, city. 
So we already spoke uh, what was needed in my opinion. Uh, you need to understand the dam damage type of the hero which is garrison in your current uh, town. If it's a magic unit, you need to understand that that magic unit hero will use your magic units. If you are League of Order, uh, your magic unit garrison leader will use celestials, uh, special units because they are mages and mages. Other than that, other heroes which are physical, for example Theodore, will use the Theodore uh, physical units uh, in the battlefield. Uh, regarding like talent trees, um, there is like couple of option, couple of obvious op options whenever you are speaking about talent trees of your heroes. But uh, most important, I want you guys to understand uh, the fire defense uh, talent, right? And I'm gonna read it, and I hope you guys will understand what it does. While serving as a garrison captain, you can force the enemy rallied army into a fair fight. In a fair fight, all unit skills are disabled, and the attributes of infantry, cavalry, marksmen, and magic units of the same level will be adjusted to the same values. What it means, right? Guys, whenever you are at being attacked by tier 5 player, and your garrison leader has this talent upgraded, it will mean that uh, they their uh, units will be changed to the tier 4, like it will be fair fight. You guys will have both same talents, same heroes, not the same heroes, same, same skills, uh, same um, uh, like tier of the units, so in order for you to defend your turret, tower uh, your town pretty well you need this uh, talent right especially if you are not tier 5 player and if you are not spending in this game fair defense is especially for the people who are free to play like me right without this fair defense uh, talent tier 5 player can appear under your city and you will get destroyed as simple as that if you are tier 4 player upgrade this talent it will benefit you very very much it will mean that you like whoever will attack you it will be a fair fight and you won't gonna lose your troops as much as before the other talent which is like sacred realm and uh, formidable like uh, Formidable is like hero skill damage dealt by 10%, it's like more attacking type of uh, talent tree, and Sacred Realm is like healing factor uh, talent tree. If you don't want to have any healing factor in your garrison, you will be choosing the Formidable. If you want to have some healing factor uh, as a garrison leader, uh, you will need Sacred Realm. But I think fair defense is very, very important, especially for the tier 4 and the free to play players. Now, this is all I wanted to speak regarding city defense in general. This is all I know uh, by myself, and I won't gonna speak much if I don't know uh, about the topic, as you already know, guys. So, like, in order for me to continue making more and more videos, uh, I want you guys to give me the ideas, maybe you want me to speak about something uh, specific, right? If not, I will continue doing what I have been done for these past 7 to 8 months. And yep, I hope you are liking the content, I hope you are enjoying the content. Um, thanks for watching, and if you like what you see, press on like button, press on subscribe, and it will make me smile at the end of the day. Thanks for watching, bye bye, see you very soon.